So, I have here a set of QR codes and my web camera is in here also. So, let's try to scan this QR code and then let's see what will happen. So, the QR code is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And as you can see, the student ID is being reflected as 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And it, it is access granted also. This one is 665544. And this is uh, should not be allowed. So I am expecting access denied. And as you can see, the QR code says that it is access denied. The other QR codes, this one is given an access. So let's try. And as you can see, the QR code is being scanned and the information is retrieved and it is given an access granted status. Same also with this one, which is the, an access denied QR code also. And as you can see, the data is co correctly being read by the QR code using our OpenCV camera. So, using your web browser, then we are able to retrieve the details of our QR code and then scan the information of the QR code and then we are able to see if it is given an access or not. So, this is really how powerful this OpenCV and the PyZBar library is. So, using this library and plus and plus socket io then we can come up with an iot application that uses the qr codes hi welcome to donsky tech in this video i am going to show how you can use opencb for qr code detection and reading the difference in this project that I'm doing is that instead of using the default OpenCV window, we are going to be using a web browser like Chrome, Edge, or Firefox to display our captured webcam video. By default, OpenCV has no native support for web browsers, so that is why we would be using a technique called Motion JPEG to stream the video captured by your webcam. Now, let's go to the design of my system. As you have seen in the demo, I have here a security or an attendance checking system powered by OpenCV, wherein you need to scan your QR code to gain access to a sample gate or door. We will hard code the list of valid QR codes for now, but it is not hard to put this in a database. We will be streaming the video captured by your webcam on our web browsers using the Flash Micro Web Framework. And if a QR code is detected, then we would decode it and display the validation result to your application. It is either you are shown an access granted or an access denied message, and the message encoded in your QR code is displayed in real time in this web browser application. So, what is Motion JPEG and how will it help us in this project? The idea is really simple. You create an HTML page with an image tag whose source attribute is not fixed or dynamic in nature. This HTML page is served by the Flash web server. A webcam is attached to the same Flash web server when the webcam captures an image, then it sends it back to the PLAS web server. The PLAS web server would do some processing, like encoding it to make it suitable for HTTP streaming and send it back to the HTML page to display. In an image tag also, replacing the old image that was already displayed earlier using HTTP multi-part responses. The process will continually loop and it will never stop and that's how we are going to continually show the webcam images into our web browser this would imitate the concept of video streaming whereas what is happening under the hood is that we are just replacing the image shown on the web page now 
So much for theory. So let us go explaining the project. But before I proceed, I highly suggest that you read this video streaming with Flash article by Miguel Greenberg, which is one of the guru when it comes to the Flash framework. So the idea behind this project was exactly taken from this post. So I highly suggest and recommended that you read through the post also here as this is this is the backbone of the project that I have done here. So the code for this project also is available in my GitHub repository, which you can also find in the description of this video. You can either clone or download the following repository and then open the project in Visual Studio Code. So once the project is already in Visual Studio Code, then you would see the following project files. As you can see, there is an index.html page in here, and it only contains the bare minimum to display our web application in here, wherein there is an image tag in here, which would stream the video captured by our webcam through OpenCV, and then a simple div element here, would, which would say if you need to scan the QR code or if you are access denied or granted. As I have mentioned in the earlier presentation, the important part of this program is this file, which is the image source, which we are going to replace continuously using multi-part responses. And the one that we're going to use to stream the video is these two files, which is the base camera.py and the camera opencb.py Python file. These two files actually is taken from the GitHub project created by Miguel Greenberg. And what this file actually do is that there is a base camera object in here that runs the thread. The thread itself will continually capture the images from our uh, webcam using OpenCV. And as you can see, once the thread starts, then it would start this function. And then this function will continually uh, retrieve uh, images from our web camera and this camera opencb.py is what we will use to capture the video source which right now is set to zero and once you have captured the video then using this method called frames then we're going to capture using the opencb video capture and in the loop in here we are going to use a generator function which continually read the images from coming from our web server. So that's the basic idea behind these two files. If you need to know more information about these two files, I highly suggest the video streaming class post of Miguel Greenberg. Okay, now that we have the index.html page in here, then we also need to have the socket.io.js file in here because this socket.io.js file the job of it is to update this element here, which would say if we need to scan QR code or if it is access granted or access denied. The messages will come through web sockets. So that is why there is a JavaScript uh, here, wherein whenever we receive a scan result event, then we would parse the value. If the message is denied, then we are going to set the message to the message coming from the server, and we would change the background color to either message denied, message allowed, which actually is just a CSS wherein we are changing the value of the background color. Now, if you wanted to know how we're going to change the value of the image using this particular bar, uh, variable called video, this actually is mapped to the app.py routes. If we check the app.py route in here, there is uh, an element called slash video. And this slash video will call the function generate frames. And then, as you can see, the mime, mime type is set to multi part mix replace, and the boundary is frame, which is actually a multi part response. And what it does is that it will replace the images here continuously. If we check the generate frames object, you would notice that it is actually a generator function. And as you can see, 
it is using yield and it will continually generate images for us. So right now, you, we are using the camera object right now, which is maps to the camera opencb.py. And in the camera object, what it does is that we would get a simple frame. So if we go to this project, it will get a frame. And then once a frame of an image is retrieved, then we need to decode if a QR code is there. So we have a class here called QR Scanner. So this is the class called the QR Scanner, and it contains a method called read QR code. And then you need to pass in an image. And as you can see, there is a decode object here, which function, by the way, which comes from the PyZ bar library. So the library PyZ bar is what we're going to use to extract the QR code. And then once the QR code is extracted in the app.py, we would check if there is QR code that was retrieved. And then once the QR code is retrieved or nothing is retrieved, then you would notice that I am sending a WebSocket message here, which says that the event is scan result. And then the message is, please scan your QR code. If a barcode actually is detected for some reason, then we're going to decode it into the UTF-8 format. And then we would check our barcode if it is present in our database. Right now, the mydata.db is actually just a hard code Python list, but later we could change it into using a database so that we could store our valid QR codes in a database. Once the, the QR code is present, then what we're going to do is just emit a WebSocket message here, sending the student ID that was decoded from the barcode and then set the variable is granted. On the other hand, if it is not found in our database, then we would set emit a message called access is denied and the student ID also, and we would set the is denied equals true. Another thing that we can do is we can add a box to our QR code. So in the QR code, what we're doing to going to do is just create a polylines so that we can add a bounding box to the image that we wanted to show. In this case, we are going to add a bounding box into our QR code. Once the QR code uh, bounding box is added, then we check if it is granted or if it is denied. And if it is granted, then we would show the message get access granted. The get access granted actually is just an image. So this one is the get access granted. And what we're going to do in this case is that we're going to read the image by using OpenCV also. Once the image is re read in memory, what we're going to do in the app.py here is that we need to encode the image into a suitable bytes object. So we're, we're also calling the QR scanner encode. In the QR uh, encode method, we are using the image I, uh, OpenCV IM encode message and then write it as a JPEG and then convert it into a bytes object. Once the bytes object is encoded, then you would see in here if there is a checking called if it is granted or denied. And what I'm going to do is just continu continuously send a freeze frame. So right now, uh, if you increase this value, then it will show you, it will lengthen the amount of time that the access granted or access denied is uh, shown to the web browser. However, if you use the, if, it, if no QR code is scanned, then we will just display the images being captured by our web browser. So the other parts of the program in here is this one which is the uh, root or the root route, and it will just render our template, which is our index.html page. And as I have mentioned, if you check the requirements.txt in here, you need to install the following libraries. But in my case in here, I only need to install the OpenCV Python, and then you, we need also the PyZ bar, the plus and the plus socket IO. 
The other libraries are dependencies of the four libraries that I have mentioned. So when you try to install this project, then what it does is that you need to create a Python virtual environment before you can run this project. The write-up for this project is actually available also on my page. So if there's if the, if you need more information to check out, then please proceed to that right out. And using the code that I have mentioned in here, then you can create your own Internet of Things uh, project powered by QR code. And then you can show the, uh, the captured images using your web browser instead of the OpenCV windows. You can actually extend this project wherein you can create an application that can execute, create, read, update, or delete operation using your database. For example, the MongoDB database wherein you could store the list of valid QR codes. In the future, when I have time, I can create those projects for you. And that's it. So I hope you learned something. Happy exploring.